Welcome back to the channel everyone. Today we're going to be fixing this Craftsman bolt action power sharp chainsaw. Getting it running. Uh, my buddy dropped this off at my house about probably two years ago, maybe three years ago. It belonged to his grandfather. So today we're going to get it running. Please like, subscribe, and come along for the ride. Lots of projects coming down the line, so stay tuned. I believe that this is a 3.7 cubic inch saw. So that's roughly 60 cc's. And that's pretty impressive for such a small little saw. Um, I was looking around on the internet to try and figure out what year this is. From what I see, I think this is probably from sometime in the 80s. But these Promac 1010s are 54 cc's, I believe. And this thing is quite a bit bigger and heavier than this Craftsman. The reason this is called a bolt action power sharp is because you would stick a bolt in here with some knurling and you would twist that and it would hit the teeth of the saw and there's like a little stone inside of here. Uh, it sharpened your saw and then I'm pretty sure this knob here was for adjusting how far in the stone hit the teeth. I think most of the people took these bolts out and lost them. I don't think that this worked very well, but it certainly was a cool idea. It's pretty neat the way they just riveted a little circle on the end of this bar. Most bars I've seen are pretty much just one piece, but this one is kind of cool. You can see that someone's been running this saw hot because the exhaust has melted this cover on here for the air cleaner. You can see this side's perfect, and <laughs> this side's all drooped down because it got heated up here. I don't know what this wire's all about. I'm thinking this exhaust is kind of loose. I'm thinking someone was trying to hold it on here with this wire. Free leaf. Probably gonna end up putting a new chain on this for him. <laughs> Probably so bugs and mice and stuff can't get in here when it's just sitting. Inside of this muffler was this screw, which could have definitely fallen down into this engine. Pretty much bone dry in here. I want to spray some WD-40 in here and down the spark plug hole to see if I can get this cylinder lubricated. Right now I'm trying to see if the 
oil pump works. Oh, it works. It works. I'm gonna open this thing up and see what's going on with this carb. So when you squeeze the throttle, there's a linkage off the carburetor that hooks to the oiling pump that oils the chain over here. And so when that linkage hits that cotter pin and, pin and pulls that shaft, it's oiling the bar. It's what it's called. <coughs> Automatic oiler. It wasn't it was a revolutionary thing back in the day. You can see the rings here through the exhaust port. I'm just going to put just a hair of PV blaster in there just to try and loosen up those rings a little bit and make this thing a little bit easier to start. I think I'm going to spray some PV down in there. Kind of free this thing up a little bit. All right. Now I'm just blowing any of that PV blaster out of there. Figure as long as the spark plug's out of here, I might as well check this thing for spark. Pretty sure I checked before and it had spark, but I'm just gonna check it anyway. Ow! Yes, it has spark. So what I have here is a little pump that pumps up the carburetor and basically tells you whether or not your metering valve is making a good seal against the bottom inside here. So pumping this, I can't get any pressure. There's a little speck on here. A little metal shaving, you can see it on my finger now. Just that being down inside of that little hole is enough to not allow this thing to seat properly.
that screw there just holds, uh, I guess you'd call it the shaft in here for the needle jet. And the air going through here pushes this diaphragm up and down. And that little nipple on there locates on the back side of this. So when that's bouncing up and down, it's bouncing this little lever up and down and it's pulling that needle valve out of there and letting fuel through. And they put uh, they put a little hole. They put a little hole on the top here so that you can push this diaphragm down. And you can get that pin to go underneath this fork on here. It's important that that pin's under there and it's also really important that that diaphragm isn't brittle. But auto body cleaner, carb cleaner, it's not good for these diaphragms. It makes them brittle. Um, your low adjustment is always the closest to the intake of your engine. So these aren't labeled L and H, but you just know, since the carburetor is going to be bolted, that this is going to be on the left, the low is. Take these all the way in, snug. Don't need to torque them down or anything like that. And then when I first start these, I usually like to back them out two turns. <laughs> And usually that's a good starting point. You can kind of dial in from there and see how the engine's running. Obviously at idle, you're going to want to adjust your low screw. And full throttle, you're going to want to adjust your high screw. And then also, this adjusts how far in or out your throttle is. The screw right here. So that obviously plays into this. You don't want your chain going when you're at idle. So... All right, carbs back together. So just to give you guys a little update on this carb, uh, I I'm going to replace the diaphragms inside of here. You can buy a kit on Amazon. They're like seven bucks with all the diaphragms, screens, jets, the spring I think's in there. But basically, in order to look this up, this one's a Tillotson. And then on the side, it, it gives you a serial number for the carb and well not not a serial number I guess a model number for the carb this one's an HS 161A so the, the diaphragm kit for this one covers uh, a whole bunch of different carbs by Tillotson I got it. <laughs> I got it. What a rig it was. I ended up
ended up sitting setting this on the ground and stepping on it to get this out of here. Still in great shape. Someone definitely replaced it at some time. <laughs> Still at 40 PSI. <laughs> so we just got the new motor in the mail, top and bottom end. So rather than trying to attach that piston back to the crank those bearings those little needle bearings are kind of going to be hard to get back in there i think i'm just going to use this whole motor I'm just going to take the exhaust off this one decompression valve and the spark plug and then transfer them over to here and everything's tight on this one and then i have to compression check this thing just wanted to show you guys we did a decent bit of work to clean this up all the sawdust out of here we obviously didn't make it perfect because this is a chainsaw and it's just not gonna ever be perfect there's the gas tank side cleaned up pretty good all right now we're ready to strip down this <clears throat> motor and put it on the put all these components onto the new motor Inside of here are the points that regulate the spark. So it's important that you get the timing proper so that this hits, the spark hits at the right. All right, so we're gonna put this gasket on here. says right on the casting set the points to 15 thou lock washer make sure you put your lock washers on the right way This is the new jug for this, and I just stuck with this bottom end too, so I didn't have to mess with the bottom end bearing. And look at that, we've got a screw broken off in there. They tried to drill it out, but it doesn't look like they had an easy out. I think I have an easy out. I figure that one probably work. That is a hard screw. Somehow, I came right out of there. Righty loosey, lefty tighty for this clutch.
So now I'll get a, give you guys a quick rundown of how you set the air gap on this. There's a magnet on this flywheel that passes into this coil pack and it's what gives your chainsaw spark. Uh, steels I think are 20 thousandths, poulons are 25 thousandths I think. Um, I don't know what this is, it's an old craftsman. The owner's manual might say, I don't read owner's manuals. So anyway, this is slotted, so you can adjust this top and bottom because there's a magnet down here and up here. Or should I say the magnet on the flywheel runs by the top and the bottom of the coil pack. And so, first off, you want that to be clean. I'm almost able to fit this 22,000 shim down between this gap. Here's 20 thousandths. And the 20 thousandths is definitely tight. It's probably 19 or 18 there. But that's as far back as I can bring this from the flywheel. So it's definitely better to be more than too little, but that's as much as we can go. I had to rob this copper tube off the old saw. Came down, something like that. Doing my best to get this old gasket off of here. If you want through there. Like some sort of clown, I just pulled the crimp connection off this ground wire. Fortunately, I have a new crimp connector that we can use. So the way that this works is this crimp connection hit up against the inside of this cover. And that's what grounded this ignition system out. So I'm hoping that putting a smaller one of these on there, this still ends up hitting that housing because if it doesn't, the chainsaw won't shut off. had this entire thing bolted back together when I realized I forgot to put the reed box back in so I'll drop that back in here now <laughs> obviously make sure there's no gaps in the reed box Put this exhaust back on now. Plate goes in here like that. Screen's also seen better days. You can see where that is cracked. I think the whole purpose of this is just to keep the bugs out though, so this will be fine. exhaust this just wraps around the back and then to keep this from sliding down 
This goes up and around here, kind of pulls this up. this thing up pretty good now just need to um, put the bar back on one thing you need to make sure of is the ports for the bar oiler are cleaned out a lot of times they get filled up with sawdust and then you'll burn up your bar and chain because it's not getting oiled properly Now you can see in here, there's a port right here where the hole goes through here and through here and pumps that bar oil and then your chain carries it around the bar. So you just want to make sure that those are blew out with carb cleaner or whatever. And there's this thing on this one that says grease daily. Guarantee you this thing hasn't been greased in like 40 years. <laughs> So now I'm going to put a fuel filter on here. I checked and it doesn't have one. So this is a, a pretty standard fuel filter for these older saws. This is a Craftsman, but I'm pretty sure it's made by Roper. Anyway, all these saws are 3 8 by 3 16 fuel line. So this should just go right in there. If you had any doubts, this is a cold start. Taking the choke off. guys made it to the end of the video thanks for hanging around for the craftsman chronicles if you didn't already please like the video and subscribe to the channel helps me out a lot doesn't cost you a penny i have a lot more neat videos to upload so stay tuned for that and until next time take care mm -hmm.